Hey, it's Bianca here. I figured for this video, talking about how I healed Epstein Bar, I can take you along with me while I eat my lunch. And yeah, it's like we're hanging out. So this all started when it was March. It was March and I don't know if this whole eating thing's gonna work. So yeah, it was March and I decided I would embark on this like spring cleaning moment at my house. And so I basically spent the entire Sunday one time cleaning with full on Clorox wipes. And I decided to clean every, all the windows, all the blinds, the bathroom, the walls, kitchen, everything. So essentially at the end of that day, I ended up using an entire bag of Clorox wipes and I didn't use gloves or I didn't use a mask. And I finished after like a few hours I was cleaning. It, it felt like it was like the whole day I was cleaning. And so later that evening, I started to feel headaches and just something's not right. Like I just had the, the worst headache. I couldn't breathe. Like, I think I, I think I just inhaled way too much Clorox at that point. And anyway, I was like, okay, well I probably, I probably feel this way because I didn't take breaks and I just kept going. I kept pushing myself to get the job done. So I went, went to sleep early that day, woke up the next day and my lymph nodes on this side were literally all lit up. So swollen, this lymph node all the way down. It was just like boom, 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 boom. Swollen lymph nodes. And I will insert a picture somewhere in the screen. And I freaked out. I started feeling really bad. I got basically flu-like symptoms. And yeah, swollen lymph nodes just feels very scary when you have it if for those of you that have had it and so I texted my brother who's a nurse in Canada and I sent him pictures and he basically said you might have the flu um, you can go to the urgent care see what they say and so you know that was I, I believe I texted him Monday I went to urgent care Tuesday and what happened was, oh yeah, what had happened? Um, yeah, so what happened in urgent care? Oh yeah, so I went to the urgent care in near my house and they took my vitals, they asked me a bunch of questions, they checked everything. They checked like my ear, they checked my pulse, they checked my chest, like all these things. And she said that most likely what I have is something viral. 
And so she didn't prescribe me with antibiotics. She was just like, unfortunately, there's not much we can do right now. We, we want you to monitor your progress. And then in a week or so, follow up with your primary care doctor. And then if things escalate, then you can come see us again, but basically like go see your primary care doctor. And I was like, oh, okay. So then meanwhile, I was feeling really bad, like, headaches still like the swelling kept even getting kept getting worse and then after yeah so I was just like very defeated that there was like no no answers for me or anything and I, I don't think I wanted antibiotics anyway because I feel like antibiotics can really harm do more harm than good especially if you don't need it um all right so then fast forward So the timeline of this was like March 15th was when I saw the urgent care. And then, and I have this because I have my labs in here, but. Okay, so I thought it'd be easier to record a a screen recording so I can show you everything that went down. All right, the very first day when I told you I had a swollen lymph node, this was my left side neck lymph node was super swollen. Then I went to urgent care the next day. A few days later, I started to have lymph nodes all up and down my neck. So you see these one, two, three, four, five, all down my neck, super lit up. And after this, I was able to see my primary care. I waited and then my primary care doctor Let me just find it. Okay, my primary care doctor. Wait. Okay, so my primary care doctor uh, asked me a lot of questions. She did tests, um, and this is what came back. White blood cell count was really low. Some abnormalities in my white blood cells right here which meant I was fighting some kind of infection. And then she was like, okay, well, let me test you for a number of different things. Like, let me just see your full blood panel. The really, really strange thing was that, well, besides the glucose level being low, was this, ALT and AST. Okay, let me zoom in really quick. Okay, the normal range for ALT and AST is the highest range is fi- normal for normal is 52 and I was 72. So I was 20 like liters above that. And then AST normal is 34 and 56. So I was like, what in the world is this? Turns out ALT and AST are your liver enzymes. And these markers are high because of either liver damage, fatty liver, or a viral infection. And so I don't drink very much, rarely, if at all. So I was like, I don't know if that's it. Fatty liver, um, I didn't think I had because I just um, I just didn't think I did have that. And so we kind of narrowed it down to something viral, but it was still so weird. So I left that appointment thinking like, I don't know what I have, but she said I can't drink alcohol and I can't, I, I should stay off like medication. Uh, so I was like, okay. Then she sent me back again. So this was March, right? March 22nd. We waited a month. She sent me back to do my labs. And these were my April labs. The white blood cell count was 4.3. So let's see. Not that one. Okay, so white blood cell count increased so it's it's kind of getting better lymphocytes increased so things are moving in the right direction but then she saw this thing called smudge cells and smudge cells is basically you know and I, I googled this and it really like freaked me out and I, I don't think you should really google things but I don't know. It was just a really depressing time because I was just trying to figure out 
So these are smudge cells. So when you Google something that's disease related, you end up really, really, you end up really, really freaking out because it sounds like way worse. And they're, they're basically saying that you're going to die. And so, so the smudge cells were concerning to her and, you know, she tested me for mono. I did, I was negative. She tested me for hepatitis, like other things that she think could have like that liver thing negative. And so meanwhile, she referred me to a hematologist who would have more knowledge on, on blood work. So then, so then I did see her again in May and now things have not changed. So before she, before she uh, referred me, things have not changed. White blood cell count still dealing with this, still really messed up in the white blood cells, but she she did check for the liver enzymes and they went normal. So here I am very confused. Okay, so then so then on the timeline we are now you know I had my birthday in April. I went to North Carolina in May for my boyfriend's sister's wedding and then before I before I left for the wedding I noticed um this side of my face started swelling. And now it was like, why? It was so weird. Like my left side of my face was swollen. And um, so the next step was the, after seeing the smudge cells, the primary care doctor referred me to a hematologist who is a specialized specialty doctor in blood. I'm like, okay. And I think I was really freaked out when I was in North Carolina because this doctor um, is also an oncologist. So she is also like a cancer specialist. And that was like, so freaky. Like, I don't know, like, I really try to block it out that to tell myself, like, I'm going to see her for other reasons. It's not for that. But it was really, really challenging. Um, and I go on this trip, like, just try to have fun. And then I get back and my appointment with the um, hematologist was coming due. And then but bef but then before that, I mean, before I saw her, I started to get swelling. So like this video, kind of okay. And then I just started to notice like, this side of my face started to swell. Um, here. And there. So this side's normal and this side was completely swollen. And by this time I was, I was kind of freaking out. Um, I just went into a deep dive and then on Google, anything I could find. And then eventually I came across Anthony Williams um, medical medium podcast. And he mentioned this thing called Epstein bar. And so I listened, I listened to his podcast and everything he's saying sounds like what I was dealing with. It was just like, Oh my gosh, I think this is what I have. And I, I do a bunch of research on it. I show up to the, um, appointment. I show up to the appointment with my hematologist and I just like showed her all the pictures, kind of like what I'm doing for you. I wrote her like a full journal of all my symptoms, the timeline, everything. And then, um, and then she was like, you know, looking at your labs, it doesn't look like it, it does appear to be like a viral situation. Um, and I just kept pressing her like I wouldn't leave. I, I kept like asking her questions and I, I wouldn't leave until like there was some kind of resolution. So then later on, I brought up with her. I asked like, hey, um, could it be like Epstein-Barr? And, you know, she's not an infectious disease specialist. Um, she is, you know, she's a specialist in oncology, hematology, all that. So, but she's nice enough to, you know, thankfully look for me to see, um, to see what tests she could probably test me for to see if I have this. And meanwhile, like I just have all these mystery symptoms, like had that ele elevated liver enzyme. I had swelling in the lymph nodes and I had this facial swelling. So it was bothering me because, 
Oh, and then at the same time, I also had like chronic fatigue. So I was having all these symptoms, not no answers, going to like the doctor every month and getting a blood test every month. It was just like really intense. So she was so sweet. She looked up some codes to test me for Epstein-Barr and... Oh, and before my appointment, I even, th- I was thinking like maybe this swelling right here was because my dental implant on the left side was um, messed up. And actually, it wasn't. It was perfect. I was checking if the dental implant was like infected or anything. It looks good. So, okay, it wasn't that. Um, like I said, she's so nice. She did finally end up adding those um, Epstein-Barr tests to my lab work and she even tested me for like other things but then I text my brother because I was very he's a nurse in Canada I had kept him up to date from March up until June so it took like March April May June it took all that time to figure out what was going on with me and then um so here it is here's like the Okay, so the normal EBV capsid, this is like a way to tell. My my levels were greater than 750. And she said like the normal is basically like none. And then the nuclear nuclear antigen test was saying normal is like 0 to 21.9 I was 443.0 so it was clearly like off the charts um and this made me feel so 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 grateful that I figured out what I had because all this time I was like what is going on like I thought I had something way worse um just looking at everything so once I found out what it was then I can find I was like okay I could finally you know take the steps to heal But yeah, all in all, it was such a crazy journey trying to find out what it is I actually had. Meanwhile, the swelling continued. So this, oh yeah, but basically she said like, there's not much I can do for you. Um, You know, this usually goes away on its own. And in my head, I'm like, are you serious? Like, is no one going to help me figure out why I am so swollen? Um, look, so he, I, you know, I just took pictures as time went on and I was still majorly like, this is like, I'll tell you the story here, but basically I was still dealing with so much swelling, um, fatigue, everything was still fully, fully happening. I leave her office or I, I get the results. I'm so grateful. It's not anything like the C word or anything like that. Um, and then now I'm like, okay, I bought literally the, the moment I found out what it was, I bought a book on Epstein Barr. Um, and I was so overwhelmed at the time. Like, I just wanted to fully, like, fully figure out like what was going on. And so I remember every day, based on like Anthony Media, Anthony Williams recommendations, I started doing like every morning celery juice on an empty stomach. And then, um, eventually I was able to connect with a naturopathic doctor because I feel like the regular doctors were just like, oh, uh, there's nothing we could do. It's a viral infection. Um, You know, just hang hang out with this like condition. And that was that was so tough because I'm like, I don't feel good. I'm very fatigued and all that. So then. okay, so then I see the naturopathic doctor and they get me on a protocol. Or, well, I did get on a protocol from the book, which was basically no meat, no eggs, no um, dairy, gluten-free. Like, essentially, you could just eat organic fruits, vegetables, and, um, like, herbal teas and supplements. So I go full force into – I go full force into this, like, regimen and this protocol – they got me on an herbal tincture. I started doing hydrotherapy um, 
constitutional hydrotherapy, so hot and cold towels. And then the swelling started to get better. So this is like probably like one month's time, these pictures. And, um, and then now the swelling is pretty much almost gone, but there was so much I did to um, heal. And that's what I'll get into in this next section. Okay, so being as you are someone, my boyfriend, that knows me very well and went through the whole EBV journey, healing journey with me, what would you say were some of the symptoms that you noticed and what, like, what did you see, notice that was wrong with me, I guess, during that time? Your uh, level of activity and desire to be active. It was just like you were constantly drained after running a marathon. Um, and it was like just kind of always feeling a little a little pitiful for you in that regard because I could just see your body, your body was always so physically drained um, from just the way it, you appeared so tired to the way you would sleep it was like your body just was like really just burning that that sleep in a deep way um i feel like it changed your appetite a bit you, mm. you stop being as hungry as frequently um yeah i mean those are just i think a couple of the most noticeable ones mm -hmm. what how did it affect you and would you say like our relationship when I was like going through the really, really like dark days of it I and not knowing, like not knowing what it was, what the disease was that I had. I think it's tough because it's, it is such a, a, a thing that no one knows that much about, um, as far as common society knowledge. And, uh, so I think it feels a lot of people feeling a little crazy. I'm sure as the person who has it, you know, you feel so much empathy for, for you, but I think as the bystander of your loved ones, it's also difficult for them because they're seeing you go through it, trying to help you find answers. And when they can't, they kind of start to like question, well, is this person really feeling that way or is it maybe something else that's making them think they feel that way? And so it almost leads you to question them, which isn't cool and it's not the point of it, but it's just, I think it can, it can just be a little miscommunication that like both parties are just seeking the same thing of trying to find a source of the, the issue. Yeah. That's like the case with mystery illnesses. Cause we went through like many months of, still not knowing what it was like like showed you guys like the lab test like month one two three four yeah so with mystery illnesses we finally figured out what it was do you remember that night when we got when you listened to the podcast to finally understand what ebv was yeah how did that make you feel because at first you you necessarily didn't truly know what i was going through so it was kind of like are you just making this up like are you really feeling this like is this you know how did, tell me about that night when you stayed up late listening to that podcast. I think it's like until you f you hear someone sound somewhat professional about something, it's hard to really invest yourself fully into something, um, into thinking it's not just opinion. Mm -hmm. And so when you were telling me the things, it was one thing, and I was kind of questionable about the research and you know the source, and then. I think I think once I started listening in depth to him speak about medical just medium. medical medium speak about all the misconceptions around Epstein Barr, it just made me realize like oh this is this is why I feel this way and most people look at this with just question marks is because no one really understands except you know someone who's has the ability to like he does to dive so deep and to really get an in depth. Um, knowledge of what's going on there nice yeah. and then last question for you now that I've started to feel better what changes have you noticed uh you're more energetic you're more active desire to be active uh more normal diet with I'd say like your hunger levels back um mm. 
And I went vegan. Yeah. <laughs> that was you, really hard for you. You going plant based was different. Um, it, it changed uh, the diet a little bit for me, um, which is is good. <laughs> I uh, enjoy being plant-based a few days a week, but uh, I still enjoy meat. And um, yeah, so we just kind of give and take a little bit there. Yeah, I think all in all, it it was really dark. I went through depression. It was hard for you. You felt like, is this she gonna be like this for a long time? But you're supportive, but you didn't understand it. And then we finally came to like an understanding of what it was. And then you like fully got on board. You started eating plant-based with me a few nights a week. And then now that I'm like happier, I have my energy back. I feel like I've gotten better physically because of all the changes I've done. Um, I think this was like what I needed to finally like really truly be healthy, like from the nutritional standpoint. Yeah. What, what, one last question. What was, was so frustrating for you about my eating habits? Like, I'm actually cooking dinner right now, but what my eating habits like that you noticed before? Uh, <laughs> you would eat you would eat things for dinner that are like a so I wouldn't I don't care about you know what you eat for dinner as long as it you know has some nourishment and you would eat like a single item for dinner like, like popcorn popcorn would yeah. be an example and my whole thing was like I don't care what you eat just like something that has something for you in it and not just like a single item um mm. like eat as much as you want but just like, like chips yeah <laughs> like chips and popcorn is like not a meal so uh, yeah I yeah. guess that would say the initial frustration well thank you for being in this video <laughs> and thank you for being supportive uh, of my journey you're welcome I love you <laughs> love you so let's get into how I healed. For three months straight, I drank 16, 20 ounces of organic celery juice every morning first thing on an empty stomach. It was gnarly at first. And then long story short, I went to get an MRI to make sure that it wasn't anything more suspect. This was a whole process to even be able to get an MRI, but Thankfully, after all my results came out, they came out normal. And then I only ate organic fruits, vegetables, and gluten-free grains. I bought all my food from the farmer's market. I cut out eggs, dairy, sugar, meat, corn, anything processed. I basically just ate raw, or I ate cooked and raw vegetables, fruits, and grains. And I made sure to reduce stress as much as I could and release control and worry. It was really tough. I slept more than I ever have in my entire life and made rest a priority. It did not work out. Um, when I felt like it, I would go outside, get some fresh air. But most of the time, I was in bed resting. And I did craniosacral therapy and constitutional hydrotherapy for 10 weeks straight. And I got two more left. For constitutional hydrotherapy, it's a mixture of putting hot and cold towels on your torso alternating it within a certain time frame and then also using electric little sine wave electric currents on your back and on your navel and your belly to really stimulate the lymph nodes in those areas studies for constitutional hydrotherapy have shown an increase in white blood cell count even after just one treatment And then I use the infrared sauna once a week for an hour each time. I use ClassPass and the infrared sauna is really, really good for detoxifying your body, sweating out the toxins. Then the swelling still was there, but I had to keep up with the routine. I took a, an herbal tincture from the naturopathic doctor and I took a handful of other supplements, immunity, vitamin D, um, so many other things. I was taking eight pills per day. And thankfully, like I said, my MRI came back normal. I had no energy to work out, so I focused on self-care and self-compassion. And then one weekend, I finally, finally turned a corner. I felt good enough to paddleboard. It was such a beautiful day. I feel like this was a turning point in my healing journey because I actually had 
uh, the energy to be out on the water. I missed it so, so much. I'm out here in the ocean. Oh my gosh. What is that? Oh, snorkeler behind me. There's such, it's so clear you can see blue fish. Can you see that? Oh my gosh. And then as more time passed, I started to take more walks. This is August by now. I remember I started my journey when I got sick in March. So long, long road. Started to feel good in August had some really really epic beach days i kept my plant-based lifestyle so i'm currently still not really eating that much processed food not much sugar i don't eat meat eggs um, dairy none of that try to limit gluten and feeling really good and this was august towards the end of august my first photo shoot since ebv i felt amazing so i was back to myself thank you so much for watching if you're still here and um, i wanted to make this video for anyone that was going through the same thing i remember looking through youtube trying to find anyone with a similar story and i just didn't find a comprehensive video that talked about everything and so i hope you find this helpful if this is you feel free to email me um, i would love to share things that work for me and um, take care everyone. See you next vlog.